Hello and welcome to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in this tutorial, I'm just going to fix some things uh, that we did to optimize our pathfinding. Uh, one thing we did forget to do, or at least I did, uh, was account for the offset uh, we made uh, last tutorial. So what I did here is just made a new vector 2 called offset. And it gets this position variable and it uh, subtracts a new vector uh, which is with half the screen uh, width and half the screen height. Uh, so you can do this basically by just copying this line in our right map uh, method and we put it here basically uh, except we're declaring a new variable and we're subtracting instead of minus equal we subtract uh, from position. So once you get the offset variable, basically what you want to do is go down here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, to this place. Uh, right before the return path and path dot reverse. Uh, this is basically where it puts the actual uh, cell positions into uh, actual locations on the map, uh, and that's, it does that by just multiplying it by the grid size. Uh, what we want to do is we want to uh, add we want to add the offset uh, divided by the grid size so and then just make it an integer or convert it so uh, I basically this is uh, do it for the y where it has the y on the on the same line or on the same argument and you want to do it for for x. So you want to do it for this path dot add and this path dot add. So just go ahead and do that. Uh, before it looked like this, I basically just did like that. And then same thing for uh, the x. Just change this to x. So that's basically it. Uh, so this just accounts for the offset. Uh, as before, if you might have debugged it uh, long enough, uh, you might have saw that sometimes it did not work or it went in, the, in a different direction that you were int intending it to go to. Another change I made to uh, this code is this line right here. Uh, if p dot x is smaller than zero or p dot y is smaller than zero, return null. And basically the reason we have this is basically saying uh, if we're accidentally checking any adjacent uh, adjacent uh, cells that are on the edge uh, that don't exist. For example, if we check an edge uh, node and it checks for all the adjacent nodes, uh, some of those nodes are not going to even exist and therefore it will go out of the array. So basically we're saying uh, if any of these are pretty much out of the array, or actually, you know what, I should add to this p dot x. If p dot x is greater than, greater or equal to, uh, actually greater to map dot get length uh, zero or p dot y is greater than map dot get length one okay so basically what I'm doing here is basically uh, saying no matter what don't check any of the non-existing uh, non-existing nodes because then it'll just crash and give us an error uh, what we want to do is just return null and that will basically have to make forces the enemy to do a research or uh, find another path and do this whole process over again uh, which could end up fixing uh, and uh, finding the correct path uh, so that's basically it another concern I had was I reviewed this find path method and uh, I realized this is slightly inefficient because uh, what we're doing is oops we're writing the whole map the collision map and then we're also finding a path at the same time every time we want to find a new path and so I think we can just get rid of this collision map and just find that uh, once in a while and if it can't if it returns null if the path returns null then we can uh, write a new map but uh, I'm not sure if we're going to do that today I think we should go on to the something a little bit more fun like uh, map maker but we might 
Uh, I'll see what I decide right now. You know what? Okay, so... Uh, yeah, actually, let's just go onto the map maker. So, uh, I'm gonna go here, and we're gonna create a new, uh, class. Okay, and we're gonna call this class, uh, map maker. Uh, I think we made a class called play component, did we? I don't think so. Okay, well anyway, this will basically just take care of uh, the whole map making process. Uh, it'd be basically just like a whole nother game. Uh, we're going to make this similar to our game one class. It's almost just going to be in another game completely, just in the same project. So here, first thing we need is an update. Or actually, a constructor, public map maker. Uh, no arguments. And then we need a uh, public void load content to obviously load our all our content that we need. Uh, public void uh, update. So as you can see, it looks very similar to uh, a game one class, basically and draw and then we're gonna have to uh, get some arguments for these slow content we need the content ma manager oh yeah remember uh, also to get all your uh, namespaces from the XNA framework and put them in the map maker as well okay just put content uh, here for low content and then update we want game time and we're just gonna call this game time you might be wondering why game time is actually useful uh, in a lot of cases it's very useful because it allows us to accurately uh, time things uh, because the game theoretically runs at 60 frames per second uh, but that doesn't always happen so the game time gets an accurate uh, measurement of time or the time between each frame so say like it's lagging it'll still get the correct time uh, in milliseconds seconds whatever you want so it, that's why it's very useful so we might change all our timers instead of depending on the frames per second we're gonna depend on milliseconds of actual real time so we might change that later but not right now uh, okay so we got our basic outline ready uh, and actually let's make a HUD HUD variable uh, just a second okay so oops I don't think we made a low content method for a HUD well anyway we'll take care of that later so now what we want to do is sort of copy our game one class by you know adding our cursor things like that uh, we also want to add this map maker to the game one class so let's go ahead and add it somewhere to the top so map maker map maker and go down to our update here and then uh, we're gonna make a switch case statement and this basically is going to uh, represent what game state or what it should uh, update and what it should draw. Should it draw the real game or should it draw the map? So uh, switch game. What? Game state. Do I have a game state? Okay. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to put a case game, which is the default. Uh, game state and if you're wondering where I'm getting uh, this random variable game state game state I think we created it uh, before it's right here it's a string variable so basically when that variable equals game then uh, it will do this it will start updating things here and yeah and then I'll make another case and this will be uh, if it's on map maker so if it's 
on MapMaker is going to update. Uh, oops. It's going to update the map maker. So, pretty self self explanatory. Oops, put the colon here. So, just say map maker dot uh, update. And we're going to pretty much do the same thing for uh, draw method. Uh, we're going to copy this actually. Oops, why am I getting an error? Oh, okay. We need, we need to put game time in here. Okay. So, actually, I'm, I'm going to copy this whole switch statement and paste it in here. And I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Oops. Paste it here. So, this, will ha this is our normal stuff. This will happen during... Uh, the game or when the game state equals game and then we'll do our own map maker dot draw and what I would like to end up doing is make another class uh, again called play component and it's going to be like a map maker class uh, except it will do all the normal game stuff uh, so instead of having to just write all this messy uh, code right here uh, all we have to do is put that in a class and then run one method. Okay. Uh, it looks like we're running out of time, so hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, please like, comment, rate, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.